The Devil Wears Prada elevated a company like Prada and a person like Anna Wintour to new heights of fame and acclaim. What else can we expect from a film starring Meryl Streep, Anne Hathaway and Emily Blunt, to mention a few standout performances? The film was released in 2006 and remains a favourite fashion choice for many movie nights, striking a perfect balance between drama and comedy with a plethora of quotable lines. Aside from the sheer amount of entertainment value and beautiful styles, The Devil Wears Prada has a lot to teach us. Miranda's attitude and confidence are two of the most fascinating aspects to observe. She is talented, powerful, innovative, and she never doubts the decisions she makes. It was her way or the highway since she understands her importance and believes she's irreplaceable. If you know what you're doing and how to do it, being confident will open doors for you, and having the right attitude will make you appear to be the leader. Miranda also clearly demonstrates that you don't have to be loud to be assertive. She is self-assured and gets her way not by being overly talkative or loud, but by being soft-spoken and direct. What if I don't want to live the way you live? Oh, don't be ridiculous, Andrea. Everybody wants this. Everybody wants to be us. Miranda's closing comments ring true. Everybody wants to be us. And by we, she means strong, confident women who transform the world. Remember, no matter how nervous you are to fake it until you make it, in most cases, projecting a knowledgeable, confident demeanour is half the fight won. What you don't know is that that sweater is not just blue, it's not turquoise it's not lapis it's actually cerulean miranda's monologue about how significant fashion is whether people like it or not was a very memorable scene i will now never forget the color cerulean even if i still second guess how to pronounce it and did you know that in 1999 cerulean was the first pantone color of the year it's the color of the millennium while there isn't much to say about andy's outfit as a whole the cerulean tone of her sweater was and still is iconic all right everyone gird your loins the film shone light on something we'd all heard stories about a highly toxic work environment in the fashion industry at a major magazine. It also emphasised the misogynistic standards that women in positions of authority face throughout their careers. To someone outside the fashion world, it may appear to be perfect and glamorous, but the fashion industry is much more than beautiful images and elegant outfits. It is a trillion dollar industry that has a wide ranging influence on the economy, and the figure is only growing. When working in fashion, there are plenty of evenings that pass into mornings, seemingly impossible jobs, and puzzling responsibilities as depicted in the film. It's hardly the glam profession that most people imagine it to be. Andy is an average-sized woman, yet she is referred to as fat when she joins Runway. Emily starves herself in order to reach her unhealthy Paris weight target. Miranda is also unafraid to criticise new collections she dislikes. Prepare for your work or character to be shredded to bits if you choose to work in the creative sector or public sphere. You must learn to put on a brave front. However, when you go home, it's okay to cry it all out because criticism sucks. Yes, fashion isn't as glamorous as one may imagine, but we have to admit that it is on some days. Fashionable outfits, new releases, meeting celebrities and runways are a few of the perks of the job. People believe that fashion is unimportant, that clothing and style can be superficial pursuits with no real-world impact. However, every time you get dressed, you send signals to the world. Whether it's, I don't care about what I look like, or look at me, I'm great. Fashion is important, and it has the capacity to be glamorous. Okay, can you please spell Gabbana? When Andy first begins her new job, she is a journalist who doesn't fit in with the fashion girls and has little to no interest or knowledge in fashion. This, however, does not justify her lack of knowledge. Whatever industry you work for, make sure you grasp the facts, procedures and techniques like the back of your hand. And if you don't, ask for help. It's pointless to waste anyone's time. Not knowing anything or having doubts about the spelling of Gabbana is no longer an acceptable excuse, especially in this day and age. Even if you're new to a job, you should always be aware of who the main influential individuals are in your company. 
In Andy's defence, she took a risk by accepting this position in a whole new industry, and it didn't take long for her to start dressing the part and gain some useful knowledge. So in a way, the lessons we took away from this is do your research and be able to adapt. Black is a classic that's always in style. It's a simple colour that can be dressed up or down. Miranda, Andy and Emily look stunning in their black ball gowns, proving to everyone that my choice of a black prom dress was perfect. It's elegant and timeless and even Princess Diana knew exactly what she was doing. Andy begins the film as a recent journalism graduate who, after pursuing any and all available jobs in New York publishing, has finally decided to try her hand at becoming an administrative assistant to Miranda Priestley, the most influential person in fashion. This is despite her ambition to work in serious journalism and her dismissal of fashion being real work. Andy is destitute at this stage, dating a line cook and hanging out with friends who despise their jobs and toast to the concept of jobs that pay the rent. In the end, it's assumed to the audience that Andy finally acquires her ideal job and appears to be happier in it. So whatever you do, make sure you enjoy every minute of it. A passion like that may make even the most difficult situations seem insignificant. Sometimes we do need to have a job merely to have a job and pay the bills. But as Mark Anthony says, if you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life. Oh, what else? Um, well, they're showing a lot of florals right now, so I was thinking I could florals? do a shoot. For spring. Groundbreaking. Miranda first refers to Andy as Emily, demonstrating that in both fashion and the workplace, everyone is replaceable. Miranda doesn't address Andy correctly until she begins to distinguish herself. Andy earned Miranda's respect by standing up to her, obtaining an exclusive Harry Potter manuscript, and simply being brave. Be bold if you want to gain respect. The Florals for Spring line encapsulates what fashion is all about, doing the unexpected and breaking conventional norms. While the film emphasises the idea of fitting in, one of the great aspects of fashion is the ability to stand out through your own personal style. Showing off your individuality is one of the ways you can be groundbreaking. Miranda swinging her multiple jackets and coats over to Andy are some of my favourite moments in the film, since it's both terrible and so good. As a result, I've learned that you can never own too many coats. They have the potential to radically alter the appearance and style of your outfit. Your core outfit might be simple, but adding a statement coat or jacket can drastically transform the appearance. Coats and jackets can be used to dress up an outfit and make you stand out, or they can be worn to blend in with the crowd. So yeah, never too many jackets. Miranda Priestley appears to have it all. The fashion industry's respect and fear, a well-paying job and a vast collection of brands she knows firsthand. However, in addition to her wonderful job and privileges, she must make major sacrifices. They may be harsh and require stabbing backs in the belief that it will be worth it. The terror that this behaviour creates can contribute to why it's lonely at the top. Miranda is frequently portrayed in the media as a workaholic with no time for personal life. The film depicts yet another of her marriages collapsing, and Christian Thompson attempting to dethrone her as runway editor-in-chief. It's lonely at the top, yet success is highly sought after. To be successful in society is to have a target on your back, so be cautious. But what if this isn't what I want? Andy knows it's time to go when she realises she's lost herself and has begun to resemble Miranda. She even had a badass moment where she quit her job by throwing her phone into a fountain in Paris. Recognise when you're done. Yes, adapting to your job is okay, but don't lose sight of who you are. Instead, adhere to your values and recognise when it's time to walk away. Your health and happiness should always come first. Don't prioritise your profession over them. There will always be other opportunities to further your career, and it's okay to step back or say that you're finished. It's not a sign of failure. That's all. Union, which exposed the exploit. That's all. That's all. That's all. That's all. That's all. That's all.